What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Kick and Make Up Show. I'm the American Hybrid, Nick Cunningham. With me, as always, Jeremy J.D. Dorsey. And it is fight week in the Quad Cities again. Yes, yes. It feels like we just had fight week because we did. We did, but, right. you know, it, it, it's great when you can say it's fight week. Yes, Invicta FC9 is coming to the Quad Cities, to the River Center, this Saturday night, November 1st, for Invicta FC9. Hanchek versus Hashi, and uh, man, we are going to just get everything we can, and more, and even more after that. Uh, man, huge, huge that Invicta's coming. I, I don't, yeah, yeah. I mean, especially for the Quad City area to get an event, the, you know, the size of Invicta to, to, to come and grace our area, you know, we can't help but be overly excited and also feel like we have to you know cover it like a wet blanket like it, we, we have to be all over it and we're going to be all over it so if you have an opportunity to follow us at you know all of our all of our places kickandmakeup.com our facebook group page twitter instagram um make sure you do that because if you are craving coverage for invicta invicta fc9 um you're going to be able to get it. Yeah, this is, this is that weekend. <laughs> and before I go in and talk a little bit about just the importance of Invicta right now, because like I told you before, I think it's getting downplayed a little bit. And that's not the fault of Invicta. It's just that it's still, it's one of those gems that nobody knows about if you don't know about it, if that makes any sense. But before we get in, in, into Invicta, I want to get everything out of the way as far as um, where you can find us at www.kickandmakeup.com is the website. All of these shows are on there. The past shows. Um, no, I don't know why I said the past shows and the future shows <laughs> are on there. Ooh, that we haven't even done yet. Right. No. Uh, so www.kickandmakeup.com. Um, pictures, everything. Um, yeah. Articles that you do. Yes, for Ola I still America. write for Ola American newspaper. I've got a couple art. Uh, Issues, uh, issues. A couple articles uh, that I've written about Invicta too. Uh, I will be doing another one tomorrow, so make sure and check those out there. Um, also, Twitter. We we uh, I, th I feel like we need to hit up Twitter a little bit more lately. Um, we were yep. we were pretty hot and heavy for a while, and yep. so we'll get back onto there. But at Kick and Make Up is the shows and Jeremy's, and at Hybrid MMA is mine. And uh, yeah, man, we need to get up back on there and, and yeah, and start start yeah. cranking some stuff right. out. I mean, it's 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 there. It's kind of hard when you are kind of starting, but um, you know, we, we have a decent amount of followers, and we definitely need some more. So if you're watching the show, um, make sure that you jump on and start uh, following us on Twitter. Right, and Instagram you added uh, yes. last month, so and kick and make up on Instagram as well. So, um, yeah. Don't forget the YouTube page. We finally transitioned all the way to YouTube. Got a nice amount of hits for our last show. So um, make sure you keep coming back to uh, to YouTube. I think that's it. That's everywhere, man. I, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. we're we'll doing a Vine. We'll do a quick. Which, which, speaking of Vine, something similar, maybe. Yes, yes. And there's no maybe. Maybe I'm going to tell you right now, and I change my mind that I'm not. But something brewing. Yeah, vine -like. we, we can we can talk about it. Vine -like. Talk oh, yeah, about vine -like. it. Um, it a lot of times when I watch fights, um, you know, I I have the benefit of having this guy here. I usually have my friend James is over, my my brother in law, um, Bear is over. Like we 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 always have a you know a nice house full of people. So I definitely get the experience of being able to talk about the fights with people. So I said, why not? talk about the fights with everybody because I know certain people don't really have the opportunity to have, you know, um, that, that interaction with people. So what we're going to do is um, take my camera, my nice 1080p camera phone, and we're going to start shooting a few videos of reaction to um, our reaction to fights that have just occurred. So what you'll be able to do is um, say, you know, we're watching you know, UFC 180 and there's a fight you know whatever fight it is when we start once that fight is over within five minutes within five minutes you'll have our reaction to that fight so we'll be on there talking for about two to three minutes might take another two minutes to upload and it'll be there and it'll be posted on facebook it'll be uh, on our youtube page so um what better way than to get people the 
um, the information and reaction that they want than to put it out immediately after the fight is over. So um, it'll give you an opportunity if you're watching us too and you enjoy what we have to say or if you don't agree with it or if you feel a certain way, um, you can respond to it and you can right. talk about it and we'll interact with you during the show or during the, during the pay-per-view. So, um, you know, I think that'll be, that'll be pretty cool. And if it takes off and if it does well, we can start extending it to other things that we watch too that'll be live. You know, like maybe if it's, you know, an episode of Tough and, right. you know, <laughs> people have feedback for that or they want to talk about that. We can, you know, we can start talking about that. We might do some of it with, um, you know, some of the things that Invicta this week. So. Yeah. It gives you, yeah, it just gives us an instant reaction the time to say exactly how I feel unfiltered mm -hmm. I don't get to go home and write up some notes and, right. and edit the notes right. and stuff and then come and talk about them that's your raw whatever you feel yeah. and then Monday hopefully you feel the same way yeah. that yeah. you did and then too right? like I mean think about some of the moments that we've had with fights after you know what, what fight was that where I ran around my house because some, uh, someone lost that they shouldn't have lost. I can't remember which one it was. I don't know. I feel like it was maybe GSP and uh, Hendrix. Yeah, that's what it was. That's what it was. And yes. yep, just, just completely ran around my house. So imagine if we had just turned the camera on right then, Yep. you would have got all that good juicy <laughs> reaction right yes. then and there. So yeah, I think that's why it'll be good. So. Um, don't really know exactly what the name is going to be. We got to come up with something yeah, catchy for the name, right. but you know, I like it. So hopefully you guys like that too. Let us know um, on any of the stuff we talked about, of what you think about it, what you, what else you want to see for these little mini clips. And uh, yeah, that's mini clips. Like I told you before, that that's where it's at right now. Short mm -hmm. and sweet to the point. And I'm glad you brought up. Uh, you know, maybe we'll do an, ep an episode of Tough Twenty and in, in our feedback because that's what I was going to talk about real quick before we get into the high kick was Invicta FC and it's coming, to, like I said, if you're in the Quad Cities, you have to get to this show on Saturday if you are an MMA fan. Um, and even if you're not, it's something, to, it's something to do on Saturday night that's so unique to our area and so huge, but it's not getting the coverage that I feel like it should be getting. Mm -hmm. um, I like I said right now it's UFC World Series of Fighting Bellator and Invicta and those are the four companies in no particular order of first through fourth but those are the big ones right now mm -hmm. and you know and and one FC over in in Asia but Bellator or excuse me Invicta FC is like I've always said it's like the the female UFC mm -hmm. I mean it's it's as big to me as the UFC is as far as relevance in the sport right now mm -hmm. um Tough 20, over half of those uh, women are from Invicta. Um, Invicta groomed them and, and, and ma had them mature, and then they went off to the UFC. So, um, And it's not like a feeding company for the UFC either, but that's why this show's doing so well in this season is because we all met them on Invicta, saw them fight mm -hmm. each other, uh, and their personalities are huge. Mm -hmm. And it's, 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 a, it's a huge, huge company. Cyborg's making her debut in Invicta. Um, in December, mm -hmm. I believe December 5th. So Invicta's just pumping out these cards too. Mm -hmm. But Cyborg, so let's talk about Cyborg making her debut on UFC Fight Pass in mm -hmm. December. Mm -hmm. One step away. One st <laughs> right, obviously, <laughs> One you know, that's away. getting her foot in the door yeah. uh, to be in the Bantam weight, which she's had been talk about cutting weight. Dana said he wants to see her fight a couple times. And then, you know, we've got Rousey and Cyborg which is the fight we've been waiting for for like two years mm -hmm. for Rousey. Mm -hmm. So that's how important Invicta is as far as uh, grooming the the fights that come later. Mm -hmm. And it's coming right to the Quad City. So, you know, obviously if you're watching this from anywhere else and you're close by, like you said last week, yeah. drive from Chicago to the QC, drive a couple hours from Indiana or anywhere in the Midwest, even Minnesota, we've I've covered a show in Minnesota. It's an easy five and a half hour drive. Mm -hmm. If you love the sport, mm -hmm. you want to see this. You've got, um, you know, and then the names on it too. You might not know them right now, but you will within the year. Yeah, um, and so that's why it's just so important. And I hope that this show, you know, puts the Quad Cities back on the map again, mm -hmm. so to say. Mm -hmm. um, because like I said, it is streaming on UFC Fight Pass, mm -hmm. which is was kind of, everybody was sketchy about it mm -hmm. early on, but the signing of Invicta to be on Fight Pass kind of jumped everybody up. So mm -hmm. Definitely. And I mean, if you, for whatever reason, whatever reason, you can't make it, 
I am going to go out on a limb and guarantee that we will have the most coverage of Invicta FC9. Like, of anyone on planet Earth. I believe so. I mean, I, we're going to have everything. We're going to have video. We're going to have pictures. We're going to have interviews with tons of fighters. You know, and <coughs> one of the cool things about Invicta is that a lot of time they have... Um, they have other people from UFC who may be there to commentate or, you know, just there to catch the fight because, you know, there, there are some fighters who, you know, live within the radius and they probably would be willing to drive up and see, you know, mm -hmm. see the show. So um, you never know who we're going to get, but I guarantee you that we're going to cover it like no one else is going to be covering it. So um, yes. kickandmakeup.com is this place that you want to be. Dot com, I was going to say, to check, just to check our credentials and references, <laughs> yes. go see what we did for uh, UFC, what was it, 171 or 2 with the Pettis and, uh, yes. Pettis and, uh, oh, Henderson, 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 Henderson Pettis, in Milwaukee. in Milwaukee, look how much coverage we have from <laughs> that, and then, uh, then ask yourself, are these guys for real when they say we're going to oh have the God. most coverage ever, yeah, yeah, we, we covered that thing like none other. So <laughs> we'll leave it at that. <laughs> yep. Go check and make sure we and see what we did. We'll be doing it again this time for Invicta. We love UFC. Thank you. <laughs> I see quiet too. All right, moving on. <laughs> moving on to this week's high kick. Aldo versus Mendez to UFC 179. Man, that was uh Probably, well, I would say probably top three fight of the year. Definitely. That's definitely going to be a candidate for fight of the year. Um, if you haven't seen it, it's Monday now, so we're just going to spoil it. Spoiler alert. Right now, spoiler, if you haven't seen it, stop. Spoiler. We'll Don't some watch. Time. Don't watch. Turn your sound down. And done. So hopefully, hopefully that you got away from the uh, camera. Aldo wins. Decision win. Um, deservingly so. Mm -hmm. It was back and forth like we were just talking about, too. You know, when you have a back and forth, a tremendous fight like that, it's gonna go to the champion. Um, it's in Brazil, that helps too. Um, but yeah, like I like what you said at the end too. It, it shouldn't have not gone to him. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and and a lot of times we have these fights, and you can make a reason for the fight to go to the person who lost. And in this fight, I couldn't make an adequate reason to say that Aldo didn't win. I mean, it was very close, and, you know, if somebody saw it going Mendez's way, I could probably agree with that a little bit. But, um, you know, a lot of times we say, and you know, it's not exactly the, probably the most fair, but you, you got to, you really got to beat the champ, especially when you're on his home turf. Yeah. Um, you know, you really have to do some things that really make him <laughs> look like he lost. And, right. I mean, there, there were, if, if, if you could call a fight, you know, as close to a draw as possible with it still being towards Aldo. <laughs> like, it was one of those 51-49. Yeah. You know, it was, yeah. it was, you know, it was very close. And, um, you know, it, it's tough for Mendez when, you know, you know that he put everything he had into that fight and, you know, still came up short. But that doesn't say that, you know, he... Um, you know he, he he's a he's a poor fighter or anything like that either because he he put on a heck of a fight had did probably more damage to Aldo than we've ever seen before right. and um, but Aldo was able to you know put a lot of damage out there too um, stuffed a lot of takedowns um, you know did a lot of the, the smaller things that'll get you points yeah but also dealt a lot of damage too so right and that's gonna be so here's gonna be the the topics of conversation for the uh, Monday morning quarterbacks or the water cooler <laughs> chats. Mm -hmm. So, round one. Mm -hmm. Aldo got off two huge shots, one dropping Mendez. Did that have uh, lasting effects on the fight? I say no. Um, it, it, I say no, but I, that, that was, he dropped him right. after, the, after the horn right. and, and he hit him twice. Yeah. So it was a perfect uh, two-piece combo. Yeah. Um, that's gonna be up for grabs as far as should he should Aldo have been deducted a point would that point have made a difference in the decision at the end right. blah 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 blah. I don't think it made a huge after seeing the whole fight mm -hmm. and seeing how much damage was delivered on each end I don't mm -hmm. think that shot really dictated much now contrast your answer there with what we saw with Stoolgate mm. 
Now, why is why is Stoolgate different? Now, I, I'll explain why I think Stoolgate is different. Like, I, I totally agree with you. I don't think that that played a major part, even though you know Mendez was staggered. Like, <laughs> if that was you know the, at the if that was at the the you know the ten second mark, you know Aldo might have been able to finish him off. But um, since it wasn't, you know, the round ended, he had a chance to recover. Um, I think that Stoolgate is a little different, though. It, it's more. Um, What's the word? Not, not unfair, but it's more obvious cheating. Yeah, like it's 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 more it's more heinous, you know. Like yeah. you you really see that yeah. he was you know doing something that you know he was calculated and said oh, I'm just gonna stay here for a little bit longer to get myself together. Yeah, this was two shots after the bell, admittedly so after the bell. Right, but you didn't get the feeling that you know it, it was something that he intentionally yeah. did. And exactly. if it had been like you know if it was. If he had got two, those two shots in and then landed two more, then that's too much. Right. That, that's ridiculous. That was exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. Um, anybody that's fought in the cage or not, when you're in the moment and then you have to just cold stop, it's very hard. It's very, very hard just to stop and then walk back. Mm -hmm. There is a couple extra shots sometimes or you're in motion and you just have to kind of snap out of it. So that's would be the difference. When you're sitting on a, a stool for a minute, <laughs> like that's you're obviously cheating, and it's just right. very it, hilarious to watch. Yeah. So that would be why I think I'm I'm very curious to see what everybody has to say about right. that shot. Also, the damage. So Chad Mendez definitely visibly left more damage onto mm -hmm. Jose Aldo than Aldo did to Mendez. Mm -hmm. um, does that? say that he won the fight more or he hit I don't know I don't think so because one people bruise differently mm -hmm. than others mm -hmm. you know um, just the positioning of shots too I mean you hit somebody f ten times in the side of the head you hit them one time here on the over bone that yeah. one shots gonna be more prevalent than yeah. the ten you got here yeah. so visually I don't think you can go off of Mm -hmm. You know, oh, well, he looks more beat up, so he, the other guy should have won. That's going to be topic of conversation. Too. And what I don't, what I don't like about that argument is that I, I personally have, have used the opposite end of that argument to justify why someone else has won. Right. Like, I, mean, I had it, to. It, it's, it's like watching that fight, I had the feeling that Aldo won that fight. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you can watch the entirety of a fight and feel like someone is winning and you just had that you had that feeling that that entire fight and you know you can't really you have to judge it round by round which is you know sort of counterintuitive but when you put everything together I felt that out of one but right. but you know going back to um, to the uh, Hendrix GSP fight and I mean like look at the damage that Hendrix put on GSP mm -hmm. and you know I felt like but with that fight Felt like Hendrix won. Yeah. <laughs> and he put more damage That's on GSP. Saying. And he put more damage. He, <laughs> so. he, he, we watched him win and and also put more damage on. Mm -hmm. So there was it was a you know, it, it marriage. It was a nice right. marriage of right. why he looked like that because you watched him do that the whole time, which we did watch this time, mm -hmm. but it was just different. Mm -hmm. It was different. So interesting that here's here's what also follows after this fight, which makes it very interesting. One a rematch is a definite something that everybody's going to want to watch. Mm -hmm. That rematch won't come for probably six to eight months if it ever comes because one, Aldo's going to be on the injured list. Mm -hmm. He's going to be have a 180 day suspension because of damage, mm -hmm. obviously, mm -hmm. um, I would say. And, and also, uh, Conor McGregor, let's toss his name in there. He's been talking shit to... Mendez before this, hilariously, if nobody's watched that clip of him oh, and yeah. Mendez going back and forth, <laughs> hilarious. Um, also, Aldo, and he, he just talks shit about everybody. So, that's the fight that people want to see also. Mm -hmm. But uh, McGregor is fighting Dennis Seaver mm -hmm. in January, uh, early January. So then, that puts, you know, I don't know. that This rematch isn't going to happen for a while. I feel like what's going to happen is it's going to be... Maybe the rematch of this in like May, uh, March or April, mm -hmm. and then on the co-main event it will be McGregor mm -hmm. versus somebody else for like a contender, top contender fight. Mm -hmm. Maybe around St. Patrick's Day, because mm 
Cause Makes that's sense. in March. Cause that the timing is right for all of it. Have they have they said where McGregor is fighting? Boston. Oh, okay. Seaver, Boston in January eighteenth. It's a Sunday card. I was so I was headlining. wondering. I was wondering. He's headlining, <laughs> headlining Boston. So I of feel course. like yeah. So, so can we can we get this? Can we get the next McGregor fight in Chicago? Large, large Irish population in Chicago. That'd be awesome. Maybe for St. Patrick's Day. So that fight, so Chicago, St. Patrick's Day, for St. McGregor. Nice. That'd be awesome. I don't know who you're watching, Dana. I just don't know who. Ask? I don't know who. Yeah, who would he fight? Who would he fight? Who's who else in the featherweight is who's number four right now? So would he fight Mendez? We fight maybe fight for Mendez number for the number one contender, and then the winner of that gets. Aldo, Aldo again. Hmm. Not nice. like that. That'd be nice. That could happen. That's very well. Boom. Let's put it the K stamp <laughs> on it. So that's the high kick. Lots going on with this fight. Ramifications of things afterwards. Man. So I like when that happens though. Yeah. One fight just spawns off. Yeah, into you all can play. Of you can play matchmaker. It's like. You know, it's like fantasy fighting, you know, like, yeah. this is what I want to see, and, you know, I would say eight times out of ten, it used to be nine, but I'll say eight times out of ten, UFC delivers on what we want to see. Yeah, they do, <laughs> they do. So, all right, somber faces on, and scene, and scene. Cool all right, the low kick this week goes to UFC 180 in Mexico, which, man, it. It took some hits, and I, somebody else said pun intended. Yes, pun intended. <laughs> UFC 180 in Mexico. So, Cain Velasquez is out. Main event. Suffered a right knee injury. Uh, Mark Hunt steps in to fight Fabrizio Verdum right now for the interim heavyweight title. Yeah. <laughs> That's what yeah. I have to say about that. Every, whenever I hear that word interim, I'm instantly turned off. Yeah. So, uh, whatever. But So, on top of that, a couple of days later... Uh, Diego Sanchez is out. Um, Joe Lozon is out. They were supposed to fight each other. Lozon was out first, looking for somebody else to fight Diego on the co-main. Couldn't find anybody, but it didn't matter anyway because then uh, Diego was out too. So they just scrapped that whole fight. So now the co-main event is Kevin Galstalam versus Jake Ellenberger. And Jake, Ke yeah, you were going to vomit again. <laughs> I, I held I it back. You. I held it I back. And it's not a vomit. It's just once you know how big the card was to have that be the co-main event now. I mean, a guy that won tough, an awesome fighter, but they're both wrestlers, so that's going to be awesome to watch. And then also, so then the saving grace of this card right now, and when I went on to check, I, don't, I didn't even see any prelim fights posted yet. I didn't see any UFC fight pass. I'm, I just saw like five fights right now. That's not good. Uh, <laughs> Ricardo Lamas and Dennis Bermudez is like the saving grace of yeah. this card. Yeah. Um, so those two guys better be in a bubble between now and then, or else. Uh, and, th and this card is sold out too, and like the fastest any card's ever sold out. You know, rightly so for probably Diego Sanchez and Cain Velasquez, mm -hmm. um, huge Hispanic fighters. I mean, just mm -hmm. yeah. So anyway. Just a quick quote from Kane. I'm so unbelievably disappointed that this happened. To say I was looking forward to fighting in Mexico for the first time is an understatement. I wanted to fight in this card so bad. Looks like it wasn't meant to be, and it's not going to happen. I'm going to get my right knee fixed and get back to training as soon as I can. I'm sorry to the fans in Mexico who are expecting this fight, and I hope to be able to come down and still be a part of this historic event. What do you think, man? Like, what do you... I mean, it's just a fight game. But. It is. It is. Um, you know, this is this is where when it's so, you know, kind of late in the game when it comes to that, you know, that card too. It's it's tough, and then this is the the non glamorous side of the sport. And when you're, you know, you're playing matchmaker, just like we, you know, we're talking about in the previous segment, that it, it's really easy if you just, you know, imagine all these fighters and these fights sort of you know, in a video game, and you can just say, okay, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, and you can set it up and have it ready to go, and then life happens, and, yep. you know, the, these guys get hurt, they're playing a dangerous sport, so, um, you know, these types of injuries happen all the time, um, and it's just something that you have to deal with when you're part of the sport. It, it really sucks, though, because 
you know, just to, you know, you, you know how close we were with <laughs> UFC uh, 180 and going to Mexico, but just to imagine how that crowd would have been to, you know, to have Kane, you know, coming out. And, yeah. you know, we were just talking about, you know, when we were watching um, the Otto Mendes fight, just hearing how ridiculous the crowd was early on in that fight, um, you know, pro Aldo. So it would have been, you know, the same way. And, you know, it, that's what I feel, you know, we lose out on as fans and yeah. we don't get to see, you know, we don't get to see that. We don't get to experience that. And, you know, it, it's, it's kind of interesting, but in situations like that, it's almost like the fight is slightly secondary to the event, you know, yeah, there, there's true. such an event right. that goes on with these fights. And, you know, it just, it's, it's unfortunate when you don't get what's planned and what you want to see. Yeah. And it's unfortunate for the division as well. Yeah. Uh, the heavyweight division is the struggling. coveted. Yeah. It's struggling <laughs> and it, but it's the, it's the coveted division where you've got the heavyweight championship main event it's supposed to be like the biggest. It's not the biggest anymore. No. No. Um, and right now when you do, you know, Mark Hunt, you know, he's living the dream right now. <laughs> Potentially going to be the interim heavyweight champion, and then he'll if he wins, he fights Kane in a year again. You wait so long, knee injuries. I mean, that's that's a year, eight months to a year. So I don't know how excited anybody can be for Mark Hunt versus Kane Velasquez. Even even if Fabricio Verdum versus Kane Velasquez was a tough one for me to get really excited about. Mm -hmm. um, the heavyweight guys, I've I've just lately it hasn't been great other than Kane. You know, I, Brock Lesnar was huge. He was uh, fun to watch. Frank Mir even was really fun to watch. You, you know, we, mm -hmm. we're getting away from some of the really cream of the crop guys anymore. And you're starting to hear those, I think because the, well, I'll say this first. I think because the heavyweight division is so sparse with contenders and names that you're starting to hear, you know, murmurs about Lesnar coming back now. Mm -hmm. And you know, where would he fit into the division? And it's only because I'm sure he sits back and sees it too. Like, man, there's nobody here. Right. There's nobody. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's, it's, you know, maybe that would be something cool if I was a writer that I would try to write an article about. Like, why is there a, a dearth in the heavyweight division in MMA, in boxing? You, you don't find really great heavyweights in boxing either. Right. And it's just like, you know, maybe it's, it's the, 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 the sort of age old adage that you know the those bigger guys are going into football or they're going into uh you know basketball so yeah. um you know maybe that's what it is but you know you would think that between that and the 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 the, the featherweight division or the you know the the lighter weight divisions mm -hmm. that you can if, if you're one of those two sizes either really big or really small especially right. with MMA you could really make an impact relatively quickly so yeah so I'm gonna take this opportunity to announce that I'm going heavyweight. Um, <laughs> gonna <laughs> gonna challenge for that crown. See you in two years. So. Get you ready. <laughs> right. And and that's hilarious you said that too because that's what I heard, you know, about six months ago or excuse me, like four to six months ago from somebody else that's saying if you are serious about fighting and you're a heavyweight, get to the gym and get yourself some fights and get to the UFC because your chances of rising to the top are faster than any other division. So yeah. that's truth yeah. to what you said. Like, yeah. and and it is truth, and it's really going on. So yeah. this will be our last Kick and Make Up show because <laughs> JD is going to start training. I'm going to skip Anderson and Trey Pro. Um, I don't know if that's ever really been done before, but I'm going to try it. No, no, definitely wouldn't do that. Yeah, so this is not our last show. Just kidding. No. <laughs> but anyway, and, and so luckily there's all the other divisions are – doing awesome right now um so we've got plenty of other things to watch and uh hopefully the, the heavyweights pick it up can you segue that a little bit just a quick 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 discussion on what you were saying about um what we were talking on our facebook group page um about the rousey um Kazangano fight that's coming up and we just so happened to sort of segue into a discussion on overall health of UFC. And I saw you mention how UFC's profits are sort of down 30%. Yeah. Um, or I don't know if it's pay-per-view buys or, it's, you know, they're, they're down. But what, what exactly is to blame for that? Like, I, I, I sort of sat for a second after I read that, and I was like, I, you know, I, I'm wondering, is it because the, the sport is sort of 
finally plateauing? You know, it's finally hitting that point where it's slowing down, or is it is it something else? Well, that's yeah. That so I I want to try to remember what came out. It was the I don't. It's got an acronym to it, and, and it was a big story of last week of of the SCCB or the stocks and trades or something mm -hmm. came out, and yeah, they were. 2014 was the worst year since mm -hmm. like 2006 or seven as far as um, just revenue coming in and going, you know, and I think that's because and it was down 30 percent, and so that's huge. Mm -hmm. That's I mean that's one third of being down. That's mm -hmm. you know you don't want to go any more that's than that because that's so anyway. I, I put it as their the international uh, push that they had isn't paying off as much as they mm -hmm. thought it would. So as they're trying like the fight pass and the, the fight pass cards and everywhere, those are from China and Japan and Ireland, Mexico. I mean these are. They're costing obviously more than it's costing to have your fights in Vegas. You're flying out your whole team round trip for you know plane tickets are not as cheap. You know we don't we don't fly anybody out in Vegas. You just go to the MGM. Mm -hmm. So um, all that money isn't coming back, and those cards they're not getting. Those cards are on Fight Pass, which is ten bucks a month. Um, you're, so you're not even getting, you know, the pay-per-view pay buys for those. Um, the pay-per-view draws aren't as big anymore. They were talking about how when GSP and when, like, Liddell and all the Anderson Silva, they have, like, 800,000 pay-per-view buys to a million. Now it's, like, 360 or it's half. It's half of that now, even the big names. So um, I think it's the international push isn't paying off and also that um, – there is just too many fights on and some of the cards if you condensed like three or four cards like we've talked about before and had one really good card like before you would have one pay-per-view a month mm -hmm. and you would be like pumped up for that pay-per-view everybody would be excited you'd, you'd watch that one and then you wouldn't get another one for a month now you've got them every week yep, every weekend and even the biggest fans like you and I I don't stay home to watch the cards as much as I used to. I'll DVR them. I'll fast forward. I mean, you lose some of the some of the stank on mm -hmm. them when you do that. Mm -hmm. So, 2015, uh, that's the big story right now too. Out, out of all the media outlets, is that 2015 isn't the make or break it year, but it is like the year where you see like what happens, what happens next, because mm -hmm. um, it's not gonna go anywhere. Mm -hmm. They'll always be MMA. Mm -hmm. um, but it just won't be the spectacle that it was or that it was supposed to be. And it, it it won't be that it won't be that spectacle unless it's unless it the, the formula's changed. Yep. And or, I don't know what formula can change. And, and you know the, the the points that you were bringing up too with you know with the, the 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 revenue and you know spreading yourself a little thin. First of all, you see that in a lot of the major sports leagues and you know, with NBA, um, not really with NFL, but NBA with NHL, like you've seen them spread, spread, spread when there was a, you know, huge boom in the sport. Mm -hmm. And then they realized that, oh man, we kind of spread ourselves a little too thin, so we're gonna contract a little bit. Right. So um, I don't think that anyone would really be too upset by the UFC scaling things back a little bit on, on that sort of side of things because um, you know, in the, the the great thing of you know having UFC Fight Pass, like it's awesome. Like mm -hmm. I love it. You know, I can just go back and you know watch any sort of fights. Like you know, I like sometimes going back and watching like the greatest knockouts, like stuff like that. Like just for no reason, just right. bored one day and just decide to watch it. It's awesome. But when you think about those cards that are on UFC Fight Pass, those are cards that okay, you've charged everyone up front ten dollars, but you you aren't really getting the ad revenue that you would get when you have a pay-per-view or if you have a fight on regular TV. There's a lot of ad revenue that goes into that, selling commercials, and you don't really have that when right. you have it on UFC Fight Pass. So you have to sort of add all those numbers in. And like you said, it can get, logistically, it can be ridiculous to, to fly people around or, you know, yeah. you have, you know, um, you know just like a, a, a regular card that's going going to be in, you know, Brazil or you know where they, they've had a lot of fights in um in Japan like it's that 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 costs yeah. tons of money to get right. and send your whole production crew 
all the fighters, all their team, you know, hours on flights overseas yeah. to to get these cards on the way. So, um, yeah, I, I really wouldn't mind seeing the UFC scale things back a little bit um, and sort of give us a little bit more bang for our buck and not give us, you know, having to, to, to buy a pay-per-view and really just for one fight. Right. Like, right. that that sucks. And, right. You know, and then too, you you see them sort of stack certain cards too that are pay per view. So it's like you're making me judge. Mm -hmm. Before it was like, okay, it's UFC time, gotta buy it. Right now, you're making me say, okay, hmm, 180 is looking like that might be a pass card. Right. 181, oh, I'm definitely gonna get that one. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yep. you, and you shouldn't have to. The way it was before, you didn't really have to choose. Nope. You just knew that you were going to get it because there were at least three great fights on. And you the knew cards. the and you knew the fighters. They were all big mm -hmm. names, and now now you just don't know the fighters anymore. So mm -hmm. the first quarter of 2015 is going to be huge. Supposedly GSP is going to come back. I'm not sure what he's going to do, but that will, either way that's going to boost sales. Anderson Silva's kicking off the year, fighting again after his layoff. Um, R Rousey is. In the first quarter too, um, they've got they threw McGregor in that first quarter, and he's kind of the new money guy. He's bringing in mm -hmm. some some dollars, so we'll know by April um, a little bit more if it if it balances out. I don't know how thirty percent if it's gonna co get covered right. in that first quarter, right. but we're gonna see some different things, and they may what a perfect time to just revamp your company end of the year new it's a new year we're going to try some new things every that's age old with mm -hmm. anything in life so we'll see we'll see and you, you get to a certain point with with sports and stuff as well that you know the ufc isn't the nfl right. the nfl the nfl the letters nfl that shield that brand is bigger than the sport you could take all those players that you have in the nfl right now Put them in another league and just called it the FFL. People wouldn't watch it because everybody has certain things that they relate. If you're a Bears fan, you're a Bears fan because you've been a Bears fan your entire life. If you're a Lions fan, I don't know why you're a Lions fan, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but you've been a Lions fan your entire life. The UFC got to the point where they felt like their brand was bigger than the fighters. Yep. And when you get to that point, you have to be really secure, really confident in, in your brand. I could see why they thought that, but they're realizing now that their fighters are still more important than the brand. Right. So when you figure that out and you realize that you, you can't get to the point where your brand is bigger than the fighters, you gotta rein it back in and put those fighters to the forefront again yeah. and make them more important than, than your brand. Yeah, so I think we'll see that. I think we will see that in 2015, and I, I think I'm ready for for a little tweaking and change mm -hmm. as well. And, that's, and they know it. They know yeah, it. Yeah, and that's and that would make me think that they are being smart and they're listening to the mm -hmm. fans. They're listening mm -hmm. to the media. They're 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 taking in everything, and they're not just saying, you know, being the the pouty kid or the right. stubborn one. Like, well, you know, no, we're still gonna do it. So be smart about it, and we will see. Uh, what happens in 2015? Either way, we're gonna be covering, good or bad. I like that conversation. That's that was one. nice. That's impromptu too. Yeah. Impromptu. Yeah. That was not. It in wasn't my on notes. the rundown. And I'm, not, and I'm rundown. not on my phone either. Just texting. <laughs> this is, I got the notes on my phone today. So just so you guys know, I'm I'm in 100% invested in this episode. <laughs> All right, we are going to do our favorite round and hopefully yours. Yeah. That's some bull kick. Yeah. Oh man, it's a good one today. And I like, always a good one. It, it is always a good one, and I like how you said that we're going to transition from being confident in your own brand and being confident in yourself. <laughs> this guy is confident in himself and his own brand. So, Phil Davis was on the co-main event of 179 this week. Uh, he fought Glover Teixeira. Uh, he had a three-round decision win over Glover Teixeira. So, what do you do after you have a decision win over Glover Teixeira? Obviously, you call out Anderson Silva. Mm -hmm. So let me give you some stats on why this is hilarious and bull kick. <laughs> so, all right, let's see here. Anderson fights in January versus Nick Diaz. So this fight would would be sometime in April and May. So you, I'm gonna call you out. I'm gonna see you in May, <laughs> like it's October. But like, so that's not even tough right there. If, if this were to be like the next fight or whatever. It's like in one year from now, I'm going to beat your all ass. Right. Like, yeah, All right, awesome, dude. 
So that's hilarious to me that this fight isn't even going to happen till the summer, if it even does. And also, um, let me give you some, some stats on uh, Davis, his last 10 fights. Okay, his last 10 fights, seven of them went the distance. Okay, seven of them went to the distance. He has two sub submission wins and one no contest due to him not being able to continue. So in 10 fights, he has no knockouts. He has no nothing. Like, seven of your fights went the distance, and you didn't even win off seven of those fights that went to the distance either. Okay, so that's some bull kick that you think that you're able or on that level to fight Anderson Silva. And I'm not a huge, huge Anderson Silva fan. Uh, I mean, I, I enjoy watching your fight, but I, I've got others that I enjoy a little bit more. But I do give the man respect of being one of the best pound for pound fighters that the sport's ever had. And Phil Davis isn't even on that radar. He's not even a blip on that. I don't. I don't know. So I don't know what. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know if he got hit by, by Glover to share in the head. And, Maybe. Uh, and, and a lot of times. Okay. First. First off. I think a lot of times when, when you get a win, you start feeling yourself a little bit. So, you know, you, <laughs> he, was, he was drinking the, 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 the Phil Davis juice a little too strong, got a little drunk off of it, a little past tipsy and said some things that he probably didn't mean to say. All right, all right. He probably meant to say it, but I'm saying that he didn't mean to yeah, say no, it. Yeah, no, yeah. But um, I sort of equate it to the, the profession that we work in. We work with kids. Um, Currently, well, sometimes you get kids who are, um, they don't, they might not get along with someone or, you know, they, they say that they want to fight them or something like that. And we have certain situations that happen where a kid will get hurt, you know, like he'll, he'll be hurt. He might be in a cast, might break his leg, just, you know, playing basketball, something, anything gets hurt. Then all of a sudden that one kid who wanted to fight him starts talking a little bit more, oh, starts yeah. yapping yeah. a little bit more. Now the kid is hurt. He's not going to fight him while he's hurt. Right. Or the, yeah, the kid the, the kid is hurt isn't going to fight someone while they're hurt. Right. So the way I see this is Davis sees um, Silva as being sort of a wounded dog right now and says, well, if there's any time for me to get him, it's right now. This is it. So if I'm going to go after him, let me go after him right now, <laughs> hopefully before he gets his leg, you know, 100%, and let me see what I can do. So I kind of feel like that's, you know, maybe somewhere in his subconscious. That's, yeah, that's what that's he's thinking. Good. That's good. But it still doesn't make it cool. No. I can't stand it when, you know, someone, you know, you see sort of a wounded animal, and now you want to attack it. Like, yeah. no, no, no. If, if you're anything, if, if you're about anything personal, you're going to want to take on – your opponent, your challenger, at their greatest, and yeah. be able to say to yourself that I defeated Anderson Silva at his best, right. not Anderson Silva recovering from an injury and probably past his prime. Yeah, well, let me remind Phil Davis, because I know you're watching, uh, <laughs> to go back and watch the fight that GSP came back to in Montreal after his uh, groin injury, groin tearing, he looked bigger, he was faster, his sprawls were better. Uh, everybody thought to him, you, he tore his groin. Yeah. Like, and as a wrestler and a fighter, that's your area. That's so he came back bigger, better, stronger, and it, you know, oh, he's one of the older ones in the sport too, you know, maybe past his prime too, and he, he, de he demolished his opponent. I forgot who it was when he came back to that huge fight. But I, I don't know. I'm pretty sure a wounded Anderson Silva is still st stronger and faster and, and better than, you know, some of the top athletes in the sport. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not who I would want to be playing with. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like he's one of those fighters, too, that, that was so devastating that mentally mm -hmm. it did break him for a minute. Mm -hmm. And then it, he fed off that mm -hmm. and fed off that. And so you want to be the the sacrificial lamb for Anderson Silva's first fight back, and and you don't have any knockouts. You're not known to be somebody. I'm sorry, but Phil Davis is known to be a boring fighter. Yeah. Like nobody really is like rounding up their friends to watch a Phil wait Davis to see fight. The next Phil Davis fight. No, and and so and he tires easily, and and it's just like 
I could see if it was somebody else that's, you know, one of the, like a killer. And you're just like, oh, man, all right. He's not that. So that's why the bull kick. It is a bull kick that that's what you did after your decision win. You didn't even, like, win decisively. <laughs> like, you won your decision. And that's what you do. Like, that's bull kick. That's bull kick to me. Yeah, bull is, kick to it you. It is. I totally agree. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It wouldn't even. It's Like, you know, I, and, and honestly, I think Phil Davis is one of those fighters who has had sort of a lot of hype behind him. And, you know, just, just following the sport the past three years. If you go back three years, you know, you'd be like, wow, yeah, he's, he's coming. Like, you can see that. But, you know, if once you start looking back now, it's just like you haven't lived up to your potential. You, you, no. you really haven't. You haven't been, you haven't, I mean, like, if you looked at him, you'd be like, wow, like, this dude is going to be a killer. He's a beast. And that's kind of what I thought initially. And then you start seeing him fighting. You start seeing his flaws, which really haven't gotten any better. He hasn't really repaired many of them. And, no, you, you're not... You, you know, Anderson Silva shouldn't really come out your mouth at this oh. point in time. So, that's bull kick. That fight probably won't happen. Um, let, let's do the Diaz and Silva fight first mm -hmm. in January mm -hmm. and uh, go from there. But Davis really isn't, I mean, even ranking-wise, he's not. I don't know where Anderson is at right now, but I imagine he's still top five. Mm -hmm. So, I don't think, uh, I don't think this fight's going to happen. So, and so if, end if, and if it does happen... It probably means that Silva looked horrible in his comeback. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, and then that goes back to what you said. Then like, why you, would Davis want to fight him? You can't be you can't be <laughs> that excited over you winning somebody that isn't performing right. at where they should be or where they right. used to be. So I guess if you want to take that participation trophy home, good job. Those yeah. are the wall of mediocrity. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. That was it. That, that was, was kind of hard hitting. We kind of went in on Phil. We did. <laughs> I don't know. Like if you are watching, like this is the this is the kick and make up show. Nothing personal. It's nothing We're personal. Analysts is what we do. Once again, we this is our opinion for everything we've said today on the show. This is our opinion. It doesn't make it law. It doesn't make it no. the the truth. Prove us wrong. This is what we feel like, and so and it's if we're like this when we have notes. Make sure you guys check out our quick videos. Oh my god! Of, yeah, those of are afterwards, be great. that that's great. when the filters are gonna be nowhere in in sight. Yes, yes. And I'm excited for that. Yeah. So yeah. yes, www.kickandmake.kickandmake.com. Yes, that didn't even sound right. <laughs> www.kickandmakeup.com. That sounded wrong. This is tea. It's extra sweet tea. I promise. <laughs> it's Monday afternoon. It's not like that yet. It's pretty dark. Yeah, it's extra sweet tea. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just laughed too, like it wasn't tea. <laughs> like, I gave him an eye to laugh, like it was not tea. It really is. Uh, at kickandmakeup.com is the shows, and Jeremy's at Hybrid MMA is mine. And Vic to FC9 yes. this weekend. Weigh ins on All Friday yes. at the River Center. That. So, uh, yeah, go to their website, too, www.invictfc.com. Uh, they've got all the fight card on there. They've got the times of, of everything. Um, yeah, don't, if you're in this area or in the Midwest, don't miss out on this huge show. Um, and then we'll definitely be uh, talking about it next Monday or Tuesday. So a week from now, we're going to be letting you know what happened and who was there and giddy mm -hmm. and bouncy around oh, like we definitely. are after every car we do definitely and uh yeah go to the website go to facebook group page uh get yourself in there comment on the show uh let us know what you think and what you thought about 179 who you want to see aldo fight mendez fight um what you think about the latest going on and all the trash talking mcgregor and and all that like there's so much to talk about right now mm -hmm. we want your feedback and uh that's it that's it Last line, you guys know it. So if you're watching, say it with us. Remember, don't solve it in the streets. Take it to the cage and kick and make up. No, no fingers. No, no fingers, fingers, to the fingers eye. in the eye. <laughs> <laughs>